Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist, author, and Bible journaler here on YouTube, and today I'm going to show you some doodled mountains. I created them first in my workbook and then in my Bible. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? And I was just struck with the idea that if we keep our eyes looking upward, God tells us to look at the mountains, but if we look upward, it's going to raise our eyes. We're going to stop looking at this earth, at the things going on around us, and lift our eyes to where he is. He is in a higher plane than us and always focusing on him rather than on our own stuff is going to help. So I have already created this in my Bible Journaling Made Simple workbook and I decided I was going to transfer it into my Bible and use it there as well because I liked how this came out. In the workbook it just has a picture of the mountains and the clouds and the reflections down below and you get to color it any old way you want and you could see a little bit of underneath of that piece of tracing paper what I had done with it was to doodle in the mountains and what I have decided I'm going to do is the same thing here and I'll show you in my Bible what that technique will look like. I'm tracing this into an interleave Bible. Interleave Bibles have a blank page in between each printed scripture page. They're thicker than other Bibles and often a little more expensive because of that, but it allows for making a large image that you don't have to worry about whether or not it's covering scriptures, etc. And for some people, that's hugely important. So I've used a micron pen, which doesn't bleed, to do the drawing. And I just drew the top portion of it. I'll show you the bottom portion, the reflection, in just a minute. And I'm going to paint inside each of these shapes. Normally, when I do my, my Bible journaling, you may have noticed that I don't tend to draw with a black pen. I draw with a black pen later. And you'll see a little bit of why that is when I'm working on this particular piece. Because I've got some colors that are bleeding because I painted like my purple right next to the blue and then I'll paint the green right next to it while it's wet and those two areas are touching and so I'm going to get some bleed through the colors. On this particular page it's not going to matter but notice what I just had to do with my finger because I went over the line. If I had not gone in and done this with the black pen first then I wouldn't have to worry about going inside lines. If I did that just with a pencil then I can go over it later with a black pen and refine that line. So maybe I want to change the shape of the cloud because I blooped with my brush or something. But in this particular case, in this particular project, it's not going to matter at all because I'm going to do a lot of doodling right over top of all of this paint. So I'm using relatively thick paint compared to normal. I often use really light colors first and then go over with darker colors to enrich that. But here I'm, I'm, I want some really nice intense color before I do my doodling so it will show up. To do a reflection, I turned my piece of paper upside down. And I can see the shapes right through here. Now you could decide whether or not you want to use a pen to draw those shapes in there. Or if you want to do like I'm doing and just paint around them basically. And the reflections are the opposite of what's above. Now there's all kinds of science to how reflections will change and how much of it will reflect, etc. For Bible journaling purposes, don't stress out about that. If you just do the flip of whatever the scene is on top, and if you've got it sketched out like I do on a piece of tracing paper, it's really easy to do. So I'm going to do the same thing here, letting my colors bleed together a little bit even more because in the water you're going to get even more of that blend of colors. And and then put a little bit of that purple right above the cloud. And there's just a little tiny bit of that showing. Paint around that edge. Add a little bit more of that blue where the two mix together. And then I've got my reflection down there at the bottom. The clouds right now are looking white, but they're not looking as white as they could. And one of the reasons is because there's no color surrounding them on all sides. So once I get all of this area down at the bottom dabbed off, and if you've watched my videos, my YouTube videos for a while, you'll know that I use a baby wipe in pretty much everything. And in Bible journaling, 
we're working with paper that wrinkles a little bit. So sometimes it's helpful to just dab a little bit of that so it pulls up some of the paint that's collected in the wrinkles. But I'm going to paint a sky color. And painting a sky color is going to help me because it's going to make those clouds look whiter. And the darker that sky is, the whiter the clouds will look. Everything looks what it looks like in comparison to what's around it, if that makes sense. So I decided not only do I want to use this beautiful cobalt teal blue color, I want to add more color to it. So I added some regular cobalt to it and just I, I wanted that contrast. I wanted that pop of the super white clouds to show up against the sky. Now you could make a stormy sky on something like this as well. If you're in a stormy season and you want to journal about God being faithful to you when things are hard, that would be a great thing to do as well. I'm putting some color in the clouds because I want to do some doodling in the clouds. And if you look at a cloud, it's not just white. There's gray and blue and stuff in the clouds. So I'm leaving just a white highlight on the top and putting the color of the clouds on the bottom. But since it's flipped on the, the reflection, I'm going to put the blue color on the top and the highlight on the bottom instead when I'm painting the reflection. And then I'll do any dabbing necessary and I will iron it. Now when I iron, I iron on basically a, uh, I think it's a cotton setting, but just a few seconds really doesn't take very much at all. And you can see since I waited until it was fully dry, I didn't get hardly any paint on the piece of paper. So the color intensity stayed. If I had done that while it was wet, I would have ended up with some of that color transferring onto the paper and that will lighten the color that's on the Bible page. And after that, it's super easy to go in and just do some doodling. I took a micron pen, a thinner one that I did the outlines with, and I'm just making patterns. You can draw just random patterns, or you can make things that are about the page you're working on. If you're drawing something and you want to use imagery in your patterns, so if you're doing something that's all about nature, you could draw little leaves in there and draw little tree patterns and, and vein patterns and that sort of thing. I'm just having fun. It's almost a meditative time when I do something like this. And it's if you're one of those people that takes your Bible journaling with you, you could get the main portion of something like this done and save the doodling for maybe when you're going on a long drive on a vacation, something like that. So for the water portion, I just put some horizontal lines on the, the bottom there because I wanted to do some journaling and wanted to leave that area open for that. And then I took a white pen to do some of the doodling in the clouds. And that is the reason why I wanted to have some color in those clouds so that the white pen was going to show up. It's a little hard to see here on camera when it's being videotaped, but trust me, there is some pattern in there. And there is my finished page. Lift up your eyes. Your help comes from the Lord. Keep your head up. Keeping focused on God and not on our stuff in this world is amazing. It really helps to keep you centered on what's really important. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I will see you again next week. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.